Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for T's. We have been solving T's math problems out of this book here, the official study manual for T's 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today, we will deal with the concept of proportions. Please turn to page number 168. Always make sure the book is in front of you. Page number 168 is where you will find the concept of proportions. Let's get going, shall we? If at the end of the video you find it helpful and you decide that you would like to work with me, you can always get hold of me by sending me an email at kishwaniprep at icloud.com. Let's take a look at it. Page number 168. There are two a couple of simple problems, uh, examples on the top of the page. Here's the first one. It says, it says that on a map, on a map, the scale is one centimeter represents 20 miles. Now I do not know why you will have such a map where you will use the two different measurement units together. One centimeter equals two miles. 1 inch equals 2 miles or 1 centimeter equals 20 kilometers but, but here, here we go the question is I'm looking at two I'm looking at two cities on the map I'm looking at the two cities on the map which happen to be 6.4 6.4 centimeter apart the two cities on the map appear at 6.4 centimeter apart the question simply is how many miles is that that's very straightforward here we go we are told we are told that 1 centimeter is equal to 20 miles. We are not interested in knowing how long is 1 centimeter. We want to find out how, how long is 6.4 centimeter. Well, what do we do? Quite straightforward. Just multiply both sides by 6.4. There we go. Now we are done. If 1 centimeter equals 20 miles and 6.4 centimeter must equal 6.4 times 20. Let's break it up. We're going to write, we're going to write our 2, uh, we're going to write our 20 as 2 times 10 times 6.4. We know that 10 times 6.4 would be 64. And we know 60 times, 6, 60 times 2 is 120 and 2 times 4 is 8, so it's 128. Well, Apparently these two cities, that, which appear to be 6.4 centimeter apart on the map, are in reality almost two hours away from each other, 120 miles. Number two. Number two, well, example number B, we are told that 3 over 5 equals x over 9. The question simply is, how much is x? We just multiply both sides by 9. If we multiply both sides by 9, we can get rid of our 9 from here. And x simply equals 9 times 3 over 5, which is 27 over 5. 27 over 5, and which boils down to 25 over 5 would have been 5. So it's 5 with a remainder of 2, which, divide, which needs to be divided by 5. 5 and 2 fifths is the answer. Let's go on then. Let's keep on moving. On the bottom of the page, they talk about one very important topic. Even though you will not see too many problems on this exam, uh, on this concept, maybe one or two, but still, it's an important topic. The topic is, what does it mean for for two two variables to be directly proportional as opposed to when they are not? Directly proportional. What does it mean for two variables to be directly proportional as opposed to when they are not directly proportional? How does it appear? How does it how does it manifest itself this concept of direct proportionality or non-direct proportionality in the form of an equation? How does it manifest itself? Well, it's very straightforward. Think of this uh, as a real world example. For example, if I tell you that if I buy one book, if I buy one book, I have to pay $3. If I buy 
two books, I had to pay six dollars. If I buy three books, I had to pay nine dollars. In other words, each book is three dollars. That's a direct proportionality. It's a direct proportionality because this, this amount that you see here is always three times, let's call this x, it's always three times x. x is the number of books. There we go. So here, well, it will not be x here, this, this, this will be, there we go. y represents the number of books. y actually, y does not represent the number of books, x represents the number of books, and it's just three times x. That's a direct proportionality. If I, if I drive one hour, I will go 60 miles. If I drive two hours, I will go 120 miles. If I drive three miles, I will go 180 miles. That's a direct proportionality. It's just, it's just some multiple of it. It's, some, it's, it's just some multiple of the, of the variable and you don't add or subtract anything to it. If it's just some multiple, that's a direct proportionality. For example, let's, let's take an example. Direct, on the direct proportionality or the bottom of page here, if you look at the bottom of page 168, that's where I am. For example, here's the first one. It says y equals 4 times x. That's it. That's it. Nothing more, nothing else. y equals 4 times x. We are not adding to anything, we are not subtracting anything. That's it. It's like the example of the book. If each book, if, if the example that I just gave you, if each book instead of costing $3, in my example, had each book cost $4, that would be the case. You buy one cup of coffee, it's four dollars. If you buy two cup of coffee, it's four times two. If you buy three cup of coffee, it's four times three. If you buy ten cup of coffee, it's four times ten. That's a direct proportionality. There's nothing additional to it. No, no, no nothing taken out, nothing added, added to it. Here's another example. Now we're going to a fancy place and instead of, instead of four dollars, a cup of coffee costs eight dollars. Here's another example, which is a little bit strange, but this is this, 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 this a direct proportionality anyway. Because here, this thing can be written as, this thing can be written as 1 over 5 x, there you go. There is your, this is what is known as proportionality constant. The proportionality constant here was 8. Here the proportionality constant was 4. And here it is 1 fifth. In other words, y, y, always, always, always equals a fifth of x. Whatever the x is, you tell me the value of x, you tell me the value of x, I'll take a fifth of it and I'll tell you the value of y. If x is 500, y is going to be 100 because 5th of 500 is 100. If x is 1000, y is going to be 200 because 5th of 1000 is 200. If x happens to be 5000, y will be 1000. It's always a fifth of it. And here's the last one. Again, here the proportionality instead of a fifth, it is a fraction and it is two third. Nothing has changed. Y is always equal to, y is always equal to two third of x. Nothing more, nothing else. Let's look at some example where they are not proportional. For example, this here, y equals to 4x. If we were to add something to it, it will no longer be directly proportional. We don't have to think of a new example. y is equal to 4x. If we were to add something to it, it is no longer directly proportional because it doesn't go up by constant, it doesn't go up by same multiple each time. It's same multiple plus 7. That's, that doesn't do it. Here's another example from the book. Y, y is equal to 2x plus 9. Here was the other one. Y is equal to 8x. But if you were to put down y is equal to 8x minus uh, 3, it's no longer a direct proportionality. Here's another one from the, from the book. Y is equal to x minus 3. These, these are from the books. Here's another one. Y is equal to 4 over x. That would not do. Because this is not a multiple of y is not a multiple of x. And here's the last one, y is equal to 6. That's not, that's not a direct proportionality because x doesn't even appear here. y is always fixed. No matter what the value of x is, y is always fixed. y is equal to 6. That's it. If we were to plot this thing on the graph, if we were to plot this thing on the graph, this guy, if we were to plot it on the graph, it says, doesn't matter what x is, regardless of the value of x, y is always 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 5, right there. This is, this is the graph of the function, y is equal to 6. So obviously this, there is no proportionality here because the variable x doesn't even appear here. So that was the end of that concept. On the next page, on the next page, there are some practice problems. There are some practice problems. 
which we'll tackle in the next vi next video. We'll take care of those in the next video when we meet tomorrow. All right. Bye now. If you wish to get hold of me, as I said before, you can always send me you can always send me an email at kashwaniprep at iCloud.com. Bye.